Good uh, morning, guys. Welcome to today's video. It's Monday. We are headed to the barn. It's crack of dawn. Oh, no. Sam always closes that door, locks it if there's going to be high winds. And last night we had a tornado. I read some stuff saying, like, with global warming, that the tornado belt has changed. And then we're on the tornado belt now. I don't even know what a tornado belt is yet. All I know is we had a tornado. It touched down and not too far from us. We have friends that wear it touched down. I don't even know if they're okay yet. Go to your spot, Penny. Sam even closed the door in here last night because honestly, it was just so windy and so... <laughs> she shows me. Put it right here. Yes, just a minute. Wait. There you go. Yes, such a good girl. Yeah. Last night we cleaned the arena so that we could work in here. This looks so sad and lonely. Oh. There you go, sweet girls. You have some sun now, some light. It's been crazy with the tornadoes, like absolutely shocking we've never had tornadoes before like honestly i don't even know if we've ever had a tornado in my lifetime some years we don't get a lot of rain and so the grass dies and then by the middle of july we end up not needing to cut our grass last year and this year both we've had a lot of rain it's almost august and we still have so much grass so you guys know chino had an abscess it's starting to pop now not a big deal. It always takes him like a good week from beginning to back to normal. And he's right in that time frame. It was just a tiny little abscess. He always gets, whenever he gets them, he gets teeny tiny ones. He's never been an abscess boy uh, before. But now with the mud and the wet, he's prone to them if, he, if he's not in the... He's prone to them if he's in, if it rains and if it, there's a mud. So I'm going to talk to our farrier today and see what they can do, what he can do to help prevent them from now on. Ideally, we could leave them in and do like indoor board, but our barn doesn't have indoor board, so. So that's what we're dealing with. That's what we're battling. We're rushing to the barn right now to meet our farrier, and Gabby had to get up and get dressed. We all had to get up and get dressed. Throw our clothes on, throw the horses out. Throw the dogs out, everybody's out super fast. It's nice because living on a farm, the dogs get to run down to the barn and back again every day. So even like on a show day when we have little time in the morning, then they still are able to get their little run in. So let's go to the barn and check on our boys. You know what makes me so sad though? Like so sad, Chino's doing a lot better. What makes me so sad is that Chino, I got to cry over this. Chino and Finn, Gray Finn, our best friends. They loved each other, our best friends. Like, best friends. They got separated from one another in the field because we tried to put Chance with them and it, they beat him up. So in order to try and keep Chance with them, we separated them. And every single time Chino comes walking along that path, if you watch Finn, he's right there staring at him. And then every time Chino leaves the barn, he looks over to see his friend. Like, it's just sad. It's sad because, it's sad because, Gabby, you gotta give him a brush. It is sad because nobody ever really thinks about like horses and their relationships and their connections. Like, we just want them to be connected to us. But they, you know, even like when we sold Finn, he went away from his friends. I don't think that Finn was like totally, well, Finn and Chino were close. Finn and Chino were close, but Chino and, and Gray Finn, for some reason, they just were like this. So what's weird about Chino's foot is that it's not even like the bottom of his foot, like being in mud is not that big of a deal, but because it's wet, he gets these little tiny cracks up his heel bulb that we treat for, but then I stop treating for it when it's dry because it's not good to like be putting all this stuff on there to dry out his feet when it's dry. So anyways, I stopped treating him for that. Like I stopped treating it, everything was great because it was so dry and then we had these big rains, like two in a row 
and then it got all wet again and then he got those little cracks again and bacteria gets in there. It hurts, huh? <laughs> so we're just doing a little walk on him. So still sore, but doing a little bit better. Yeah, the uh, this pop. So it'll just be a few days before he. So hand walk a little bit each day, right? To help bring it and bring it out. And that just, it helps with the circulation, it helps the pumping in the foot, it's going to push yeah. everything. So light exercise for Chino Bambino. Update on Sophie's sunburn. The it doesn't look really bad. Helps to get all yeah, the dry she had to put skin. lotion on it last night. So it all peeled off. It did not oh, even no. look like a bad it's sunburn. Still didn't even it's look like a bad right sunburn, down. but it was so bad. You should have seen it yesterday. I should have showed it yesterday. It was awful. Let's see the other side. So I've never ever had see, it. I've like, only once know, ever had a sunburn like that and was when I was 15. Pieces. I didn't put lotion on this one. Yeah, so she's treating it with like lotion right now to to rejuvenate the skin. It's see? the whole entire thing all the way down her back peeled. So I should have been like more aware of the fact that but she has never burned like that before. And I've always been in charge of putting sunscreen on her. I told her to put sunscreen on. She said she wanted to wait a while and get a little bit of a sun. And even like Gabby and I didn't wear any sunscreen at all. And I covered the grandkids in sunscreen, but I don't like I barely even got a tan. Like so Chino's totally on the mend. He's still being soaked. He wants to make sure that our farrier is so good, you guys. He said, why didn't you call me the minute he had an abscess? And I said, because in the past we've had farriers and they have never like wanted to be, like you don't call them for an abscess. Like they have to come in and, and they don't do much for abscesses. You just soak them and, and do the, the boot and the poultice and then they just leave them. And he, this farrier, he's like, no, I'll just come. I'll take care of it. Like, he, man, he's worth his weight in gold for sure, this guy. So he's going to shoe him later this week after the abscess is finished. And then he's going to uh, maybe try a pad or something to see if we can prevent it. He's going to help try and prevent him from getting an abscess again. Chino is looking so much better. You know how we can tell? Chino something. Bambino? Chino Bambino. Chino, Why can't I, see I don't know, but Chino's looking so much better. He is more interactive, trying to eat everything like his normal self. <laughs> and before he wasn't doing he, that. You can he, always tell when Chino's sick, Chino, when he's not feeling good. Eat a stick. But he's back, you guys. He's it's on his way it. back. You are swallowing it. <laughs> yeah, don't swallow it whole. One thing I've just realized is that the worst horses to have for feet issues our quarter horses and and thoroughbreds and warm bloods tend to be better and ponies obviously are so sturdy and strong and like there are so many things that you have to think about when buying a horse mixed with thoroughbred sucks yeah like it depends like chance has really good feet other than the fact that he has dry feet right now like he has he has not bad feet for a thoroughbred but still like your limitations as a horse owner and where you where you have your horse and what the conditions are and stuff because holy heck man this is rough <laughs> this is so rough when we bought when we bought our quarter horses and when we bought our appendix we bought them and knowing that they're like really good uh, family friendly horses we didn't even think about their feet anytime i get an egg that has a crack in it i just feed it back to the chickens i said hi chickens and then chitlin came from in the little hut thing and he jumped and flew to the gate yeah He's like, I'm here. as soon as we come out now they're like i'm getting out of this coop so uh, they come out onto this little grassy area <laughs> and i bring a snack and they're like "Ooh." Eggs are really good for chickens, and I even like will scramble some or cook some. I give them hard boiled eggs sometimes. That's my favorite little chicken right there. Isn't she adorable? Well, actually, Sophie's chicken is now my favorite little chicken. I love this chicken. Lighter. Yeah, 
Sophie and I sit here and watch the chickens and this little one that's one of my favorites and Sophie's little chicken are always right by Sophie and I. Like all the rest just leave, they don't hang out with us, but these ones are always with us. Like look at the color of that. That is a fancy looking chicken. Sophie and I are obsessed with the chickens. We didn't obsessed. build a whole new area. Yeah, we like spent all afternoon building a whole new area for them to forage in. And then we have plans to make like an actual per more permanent area. Like they have two parts that they can go out and we're gonna be able to build a third one. And even more excitingly, our broody hen, the one that's always broody all the time, um, she's laying on four eggs that were donated so kindly by the new little Silky that we love, that little I black love, and white one. The tell pink. Tell a funny story about how we weren't getting any eggs. Yeah, so like at first she was laying the eggs outside on the ground and she laid two. When we first got her, she was adjusting to being in a new house with new chickens and she didn't lay. And then she started laying and she laid two eggs outside. And we're like, okay, well, so we'll just collect them from out here. So we collected them, put them underneath the broody hen. And then she didn't lay again for a couple of days. And we're like, wow, that's so weird. And then we went to go get eggs from the broody hen. Like from all, she lays on all the eggs. Every, she steals every chicken's egg. And our little Silky's eggs were in the chicken coop underneath her. So she goes in there, lays them for the broody hen so she can hatch some. So anyways, we're gonna have some silky silkies or some probably some silky crosses. And we either can keep them or we're ha if we keep those silky ones that hatch, then we'll have to get rid of a couple more. I don't want any more, like, I don't want too many chickens. Too many chickens feels like a chore. He's no, such a cutie. So a while ago we had some scratches from some tree branches and those all healed up. I was worried there for a second that his heart wouldn't be intact. <laughs> Sophie doesn't see a heart. Imagine if he just cut down, down the middle of it, yeah. and then it turned to be chestnut hair growing back. All right, it so would be listen. Like a broken heart. I would spray his belly with bug spray because he's really feeling the bugs. He does not like the bugs. Let's see who Gabby is riding. Chino's doing better. Uh, we brought him in again. Our farrier wants us to soak him uh, often because until all the stuff drains out and then we got Chino and then Gabby's ride of the day is another chestnut this is also one of my favorite horses we're doing something we're doing something crazy you guys we're putting Chance and Chino back together Chance and Chino they're gonna be a team again and today we're putting them back in there because Chino's alone the pony that was with him has, has moved and so at Chino's alone, and we don't want him to be. And Chance is the high man in his field. He's at the top of the herd and he could use a little bit of bringing down. So it seems like a perfect situation. He's like, wait, this is not my field. <laughs> so basically we brought Chino, we brought Chance first. Chino's on his way, but we thought like bringing Chance first and letting Chance be in here first. I don't know if you're supposed to do it that way, but it made sense to us because he can get used to the field. because then Chino Chino will be coming back to a field with a horse already in it, if that makes sense. So the big reason we changed them last time was that they wouldn't let him eat. It wasn't that they were like mean to him and fighting him, even though they were fighting him. It was they because just, it was two against one and they were like mean, but also it was so calm about it. Yeah, it was mostly that he they wouldn't let him eat and you guys know he needs to eat and so we waited a while and then when they still didn't let him eat we were like okay we gotta fix that and this barn is so good at like oh man like i just the atmosphere and the mentality here is so incredibly insane in terms of how accommodating they are i've never been at a barn accommodating like this today he bolted away from me in the field did he yeah well Oh, Chance has a lot of friends in his old field, which is sad. This morning I was crying about Look at those two birds on the tree. Poor. Oh, two lovebirds. Look, it's a sign. You guys see them sitting together up there? That's a sign. Two little lovebirds sitting side by side. I think that's a premonition of or foreshadowing of what's going to happen here. He found the food. <laughs> he also will be able to see his other friends, which I also really like. 
because they share a fence and they share a water, automatic waterer. So before he used to have to come from way over there all the way down there for water. Now it's just here. Sophie thinks he doesn't care, but I think he looks no, agitated. I say he doesn't run. Yeah, he doesn't run even when he's upset, but we'll this see. Is, this is the most upset he can get. Yeah, so how do you feel while we wait for Slowpoke Gabby? Uh, how are you okay. feeling about your riding with him, even though it has to be really, really slow? It's not good right now because we're still learning each other. Yeah, and how are you okay? Chicken! Are you okay about that, though? <laughs> All right, so she doesn't care. So we're still waiting. It's been literally like 20 more minutes. 25. Gabby has to soak his feet. There's cows. He sees the cows. <laughs> He's like, oh no. He's going to see if the cows know. He, he recognizes that spot. Yeah. He knows there, there's the water. See, he's having a there's drink. There's only one of you, only one of me. There's a million of those who won't let us be. But they're not gonna, not gonna see me bleed. Cause baby, I got you, 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 you. I've been beaten to the ground, dragged across the dirt. I've been scared to live cause some people never learn. But they're not gonna, not gonna watch me burn. Cause baby, I got you. I think it'll work. I mean, they're probably gonna have a fight. Eventually. Eventually. So look at it. Yeah. So who do you think? Let's call it now. Who's gonna be the boss? I pray, you know. Don't you know that you're beautiful?